You were never created to be stationary. God gave you the ability to move and communicate for a reason. When Jesus established the church, he intended it to be a movement. And upon his return to heaven, his final words, his command, his mission could be summed up in one word. Go! privilege to be here. It has been, you know, I got here a little later than I were, was supposed to be here, <laughs> but uh, the time that I've been here, it has just been tremendous. Last night was incredible, and for those that were here last night, uh, if you were here, I'm pretty sure you would never be the same when it comes to talking to yourself in the conversations that you have. Amen. We just had a, a, an awesome time. I just want to uh, thank Pastor Larry and his wife and the Victory Church for uh, allowing me the opportunity to be here. I'm actually north of San Diego, uh, California, in a city called Vista. And uh, I've been there 21 years this December. <laughs> and God has done some tremendous things there. He's doing great things there. And it's an exciting time to be saved. It's, like a, it's an exciting time to be saved because of what God is doing right now. I want to minister just, just, just briefly, open your hearts a little bit here to bring you to a greater dimension in your understanding about seasons and timing of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, I don't know about you, but... Uh, I don't like going to, there, you know, the Costco. Anyone, everyone knows what Costco is, right? Everybody, everybody has been to a Costco before. All right, my, my wife loves going to Costco. Uh, and I just want to give this illustration before I begin to minister. You can turn your Bibles to Luke chapter 1 while I'm, while I'm giving this illustration. In Costco, I like the things there because you get good quality things at a decent price. But all through Costco, they have stations set up everywhere to draw you attention to things that they're selling or they're trying to sell. And my wife likes taking me to Costco. Well, she likes taking me shopping with her, period, because she knows that I'm not a great fan of shopping and doing all those things. But just to get out there with her, you know, she, she thinks that that's a big deal, so she loves to say, you know, can you come with me to Costco? I, I can't carry the big boxes and, you know, the big bags of dog food and all those things. And so she knows how to get me. But she gets me in Costco, and she stops at every station. <laughs> Don't let it be food. She's definitely going to stop at the station. And we take our grandkids with us from time to time, and I think they play the game of how many stations can we stop in half an hour. But I was in Costco recently buying dog food, and uh, it dawned on me that those stations are not just there to advertise. They are there, they are there to do something that God is doing in this Go Conference. Everything that they're trying to persuade you on, everything that they're trying to convince you of, it's simply by exposing you to something that you don't already understand or know about. So those stations are really exposure stations. They're basically saying, let me expose you to something that you haven't tried before. Let me expose you to something that you never even considered before. And as I was sitting back here last night listening to the preaching and I was uh, just soaking it all in, man, and I'm, I'm blessed. I'm listening to Pastor Gregory, you know, preach about, you know, being with the, you know, with the right people at the right time doing the right thing. And then brother Pastor Ryan comes up, I think that's his name, and, and begin to speak about having the right conversation. And I'm thinking as I'm sitting there listening and I'm saying to myself, God is exposing us. He's exposing us to his heart. He's exposing us to who he is and what he is desiring to do. He's exposing us because if we do not pay attention in this season, in this moment, we may just 
miss something. So I want you to turn your Bibles, if you haven't turned there with me. I, I'm, the, the title of my sermon tonight, I mean this morning, is My Time, My Season. In Luke chapter 1, beginning in verse 5, it says, Now in the days of Herod the king of Judah, I mean of Judea, that there was a priest named Zechariah of the division of Abijah. And he had a wife and a daughter of Aaron, and the name of her name was Elizabeth. And when they were both and they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and the ordinance of the Lord, blameless. But they had no child. Because Elizabeth was barren and and both were advanced in years. Now, while he was serving at the priest, as a priest before God, when his division was on duty, according to the custom of the priesthood, it fell to him by the lot to enter the temple of the Lord and burn incense. Verse 10. And the whole multitude of the people were praying outside at that hour of incense. And there appeared unto him the angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And Zechariah was troubled when he saw him and fell, and me and fear fell upon him. But the angel of the Lord said to him, do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer, for your prayer. This is incredible. It's heard. And your wife Elizabeth will bear a son, and you shall call his name John. Verse 14. And you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. Now, I, I want to stop there for a moment. It's incredible to me, it's incredible to me that here's a man at doing what he's been doing for a number of years. Apparently, he's been doing it for a while because the Bible tells us he's advanced in, in years, him and his wife both together. And the angel of the Lord shows up in a season of his life of faithfulness. Listen. He shows up in a season of faithfulness. We need to understand something about serving God. That God is looking for us to be faithful in our season. Because he knows that most, much of life is cycles. And the enemy wants you and I to be so troubled or disturbed in what we are doing and trying to serve God that he discourages us to the point where he will, that the Lord will find us not because we're trying, not because we are being rebellious, not because we're not loving God, but because something has happened to us along the way. The enemy will love nothing more than for you and I to be found unfaithful in our season. Or discouraged in a season to the point where we're not doing what God has called us to do. We are, we are released the reins just a little bit. We are resting on our laurels just a little bit. And we're not where we're supposed to be doing what we're supposed to be doing with who we're supposed to be doing it with. So this, is, this Go Conference is, is really, it's is like we sing on the video, get on your mark. See, you need to, you and I need to be on our mark in every season of our life. There is no such thing as not being ready when God is saying go. Because we never know when God is going to say go. We, know, we never know when God is going to say, now, this is the time, now. I want you to follow through, now. I want you to be faithful, now. I want you to trust me, now. I want you to get excited, now. I want you to stop making excuses, now. Are you with me this morning? So this is the important thing, right? If, if, if this is your time, you need to understand that you're in a season where God wants you to possess it. He wants you to own it. He wants you to trust him. He wants you to be ready in and out of season. Hallelujah. So I'm going to believe God this morning. He's going to help us. Because I, <laughs> your pastor is gracious. I, I think yesterday he announced that I had some flight troubles getting here. Right? Now, I, I had some mind troubles getting here. The, hey, the airlines knew what they were doing. <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> it, was, it was amazing. Out of all the times I've traveled around the world and done different things, this, this, is, this, this goes down in my little repertoire of, of mistakes. I misunderstood the timing of my flight. I was supposed to fly out at 12 a.m. on Friday night, which was, you know, Thursday night going into Friday a.m. I had that backwards. I thought I was going to be flying out, flying out Friday night, going into the a.m. And so when he called me yesterday, uh, 
Friday and says, Rick, uh, are you at the airport? I'm like, uh, no. <laughs> I'm not at the airport. I don't have to be at the airport to another eight hours. Why am I at the airport? <laughs> this is what's going on inside of my mind. And, and, he, and he pressed me, uh, okay, brother, really, so uh, are you at the airport? <laughs> That's when it hit me. That's when it dawned on me, I'm supposed to be at the airport. <laughs> no, I'm not at the airport. And I, for the first time, you know, I don't suffer high blood pressure or hypertension, what we call it. But my blood pressure just shot real fast. It went up real fast. And I, I said, man, I got to hang up. <laughs> I got to call somebody because I'm supposed to be on a plane. And he graciously made, me, made it sound as if there was air, airlines trouble and so forth. But no, 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 no. That was all mine. I, I, I confess, tell the truth and shame the devil. That was my fault. <laughs> I screwed that up. <laughs> Amen. And so this morning, I, I, I don't have a lot of time, but I want you to open up your hearts this morning. I am convinced, listen, that much of life, with or without Christianity is the cycle, is cyclic. Your life and mine consist of seasons. And I have been serving God just long enough to go through some good seasons and some bad seasons. I've had some good days and some bad days. I've had some good months and some bad months. I've had some great years and I've had some not so good years. Can anybody bear with this this morning? It hasn't always been easy. It hasn't always been easy. It hasn't always been a bed of roses. You know, it hasn't always gone exactly the way I want it to. I have not always walked in the will of God with confidence. I've stumbled into the will of God just by doing what I know that he, he wants me to do. Ecclesiastes verse, uh, chapter 3 verse 1 says this. To everything there is a season and a time and every purpose under the heavens. This conference is not an accident. This conference is a design, it's orchestrated by the Spirit of God to get us to a place that we understand what season we are in right now. Now, I have been in school and I've learned some things about psychology. The reason why I went to school and wanted to learn some things about psychology because the older I, I got, the more I realized something is wrong with me. And this is truth now. I, I, you know, I, I, I am dysfunctional in the way that I act. I'm dysfunctional in the way that I feel about things. You know, I am a you know, 50-something-year-old man, and, 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 I, and I, sometimes I revert back to the 10-year-old child, you know, that, that's, that's having some problems, you know, with, with life that I'm not getting my way. And I, I, and I learned through school that there is a, a term that's called regress development. And regress development is when you do not mature or you, uh, there's a failure to mature in the transitions of life. You go through something or you're at a phase in your life and you are impacted externally or even internally by things that you're so impacted by that it regresses your growth. You stay in that moment. Your body may be getting larger. Amen. You, you, may, you may be getting gray hair, amen, but you are not maturing. You are not transitioning. You are stuck in that moment. It's called regress development. And as I begin to understand what was happening to me, I, there's a number of things that happened to me in my childhood that caused me to be stuck in those moments. They were so painful. They were so impacting that even though I was going through life looking like I was maturing, looking like I was being successful, in reality, I was still stuck in some moments, and they were having impact in the way that I was processing life right now. Now, the two things that, that, that represent that process, that, that understanding, is your memory. And we heard a good message last night about your memory about your mind, the way that you, the, the way, the way that you function in the conversations that you have in your mind. But see, the memory is, is, is a strange thing because it's broken down into two facets. There's 
there's implicit memory and there's explicit memory. And the thing that keeps us stuck in the past is implicit memory. Implicit memory is that memory that says that this thing happened to me and it was so painful that I can't get past it. Or I'm so disappointed and so discouraged that I can't get past this thing. It's the memory that you can think back and you can remember what it smelled like, what it, what, what it tastes like, what it, look, what it felt like. And when you think about that thing, all those feelings come back again. And the reason I understand this so profoundly is because this is the thing that happened to service members, you know, you know soldiers and, and Marines and, and, and sailormen who goes into war and they have PTSD issues post-traumatic you know, post, uh, stress disorder. They are remembering things that happened to them that they cannot forget. They are remembering the sound. They remember the smell. They remember you know, a, 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 everything about it vividly and to the point where they cannot get past it. It's implicit memory. I was having a lot of implicit memory in my life, and I didn't understand why I couldn't overcome some things. I w and so this implicit memory was keeping me stuck in things that God was trying to bring me out of. See, you cannot have a stirring faith when implicit memory is active in your life. You need to hear this. Your faith cannot be stirred to move. Your faith cannot be stirred to go when implicit memory is the thing that is holding you. I would go, God, but I remember this happened to me. I would obey God, but I remember that thing the last time I tried, that happened to me. I would trust you, God, but I was in a church before, and I got hurt there. I would open up. I would give. I would move. I would do all these things. I would be in ministry. I would go, but my implicit memory has me stuck. The other memory is, is explicit memory. This is, this is the memory that most of us have. We call this our testimony. How many got a testimony today? I remember, I, I'm, I'm, I'm back listening to worship, and, I'm, I, and I, my, my sister was getting ready to sing this. I knew something was about to happen because she couldn't sing. I knew something was happening because she was having this moment with God. She was having this, you know, this moment where God was ministering to her before she was getting ready to minister to him. Because that, that's what worship is about. It's not just about us ministering to God, but it's about us ministering to him. You know, not him ministering to us all the time. And so when we worship, you know, the praises go up and the blessings come down. And, and, and that's how that functions, right? And so uh, as I'm listening and I'm, getting, and I'm, and I'm sitting down and, I'm, and I feel the spirit of God because I couldn't stand for the moment. And I feel the spirit of God and she began to sing it and then the song. And when she began to speak the words, I understood exactly. She's having explicit memory. She is, she is thinking about what her life was before Christ got involved. She is thinking about what her life would have been if Christ had not gotten involved. And see, this is what explicit memory is for. Explicit memory is said, if God did it then, he will do it. If God did it for them, he will do it for me. Now, Hebrews 11, 1 says this. It says, it starts off with the word what? I want to hear you say it. It starts off with the word what? Now, now faith. Not yesterday faith. Now, I don't, I'm not sure about faith. It starts off with now faith. That word now is an active word before an action faith. It says now faith. Now, I know what God may have done for you yesterday, and some of you are sometimes we get stuck in serving God on yesterday's faith. But the Bible says now faith is the substance of things hoped for. That means that the faith that you are applying right now, not yesterday, but now faith. As I was reading this passage about Zechariah, Zechariah, he, here's a man who has stopped believing for something that he once believed for. Because the Bible shows up, and I mean, I mean, the Bible says that when the angel shows up, he just simply said, God heard your prayer. Now, if I'm being Zechariah, I would have thought to myself, which one? Which one? Because I've been praying a lot about some stuff. Anybody been praying for stuff? <laughs> I've been praying a lot about things that I want to see God do. He says, he says, God has heard your prayer, which means that he says, listen, 
you was praying a prayer that you thought was for a season in your life. You was praying a prayer that you thought that was for a season that you wanted to see God move. But see, God had his timing involved in this thing. He wanted you to pray that prayer, but the prayer was not for the season at the time you prayed it. The prayer was for now. The thing that you prayed then was not for then. It was for now. And so it's a good thing you're being faithful, Zachariah, because if you had not been in your place now, then you would not even have gotten this message now in this season of your life. So my question to you this morning is simple. Are you tired of being faithful? Are you still wanting to go? Can you still be prompted to go? People tell me all the time when I tell them I have uh, 11 grandkids, they go, what? Somebody say, there you go, what? <laughs> what? Yes, I do. I have 11 grandkids. My daughter has, she's, she's responsible for six of them. I only have one daughter and she got six kids. The youngest one is seven months. The oldest one is 10. She's saved full of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Worship, serve God, plays, you know, she's, she's t home schools. I, I'm, I'm like, what are, you, what are you doing trying to recreate the Waltons? What it was? <laughs> Stop. <laughs> but, I, you know, but I love all my grandkids. But, and so when it, people say, what? I say, yes, 11 grandkids and so they said you're lying I said well you know I no, I'm not lying I got 11 I, I got 11 of them I got four kids and they got kids and so th that's the way it is but I, I shared that to say you know the the older I get the harder it is to get out of bed in the morning now you say well no that's I'm serious to get out the bed and you have to stretch before you move that has to do with getting old. That has to do with joints and bones and things. You know, when you was young, you did foolish things like jumping out of trees. <laughs> Join the military, jumping out of planes. You know, doing crazy stuff. You thought because you thought you because you didn't think about getting old. When you're young, you're just like, I'm gonna do this because I want to do it. It's fun. I'm gonna do crazy stuff because that's that's what young people do. See, but you never know. You better. You better pray. Be praying now because if you somebody young who did dumb things with your body, you need to be praying now, Lord, forgive me. <laughs> and preserve me that, that, that until you tarry, that you're able to use my body and my crazy self to do something for you. If I can be crazy for sin, let me be crazy for the gospel. But I'm serious. But, you know, I, 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 and, and my wife mocks me because, really, I get out of bed, and the first thing I do is go, is go into the downward dog mode, you know, yoga. You know, <laughs> I go to therapy every week, physical therapy. I mean, every week I broke two bones in my neck. I was paralyzed from the neck down when I was in the military. They said I would never walk again. Doctor said, we don't know why you are even able to do anything. I broke two bones in my neck and I almost cut my spinal cord in two. Twenty-seven years old and was paralyzed from the neck down. Now that, that's a shocker. They didn't know how severely it was because I was so beat up and so swollen. And uh, when they did find out what was going on, they said, listen, you two bones are broken, and we have to fuse them together just to keep you from doing something that will kill you because your spinal cord is dangling. We don't even understand how you can talk. A lady came to my bed while I was in a hospital in Germany, Landstu. Germany, hospital, and military. And she said, I saw them wheel you into the x-ray room this morning. I mean, into the elevator, going to the x-ray room. And the Lord spoke to me, and, he, and the Lord spoke to me and told me to tell you, you need to surrender now. Now. She said, I'm a Christian, and I believe that you know what Christianity is all about. 
See, I don't know, but God spoke to me, and he says, you need to surrender now and give your life to him because you've been running a long time. This lady gave me a card and a flower, and then she, and she walked away. She herself had been in an accident. Her husband had been flown to the States fighting for his life. Her 18-month-old baby died in that car wreck. And she's at my bed telling me about Jesus, saying, surrender now. When she left, I cried myself to sleep. Two o'clock in the morning, I was awakened because pain was shooting through my body. I was going into shock, and the guy next to me heard my bed rattling, and he called out to the nurse. He was screaming like somebody was fighting, calling for his life because <laughs> it was dark, and he couldn't see anything. All he heard was my bed rattling. I don't know what he thought, man. This is a bad movie. <laughs> Nurses came, put a paddle in my, in my mouth because I was about to swallow my tongue. And, and I, I'm, I'm going into convulsion. I'm going into shock because the pain is so severe. And finally, they get my doctor there. And they said, they said, he said, give this man something for pain. They're like, he's paralyzed. He said, no, the pain, the paralysis is reversing. Shot me up with morphine. I think heaven's going to feel like that. <laughs> Thank you, brother. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just saying. <laughs> the pain went away, but the pain came back every three hours and 59 seconds. It just came back, just, sh just shot right back. He began to do a pen test. He said, I want to see if you can move anything. And I could barely wiggle my finger and my toes, but I could. He began to stick me with the pen, and, and he said, can you feel? I said, I can barely feel all of that. He says, I don't understand what is happening, but your paralysis is reversing. There's no reason for it, because according to the MRI, your T7 and C1 are crushed. And your spinal cord is almost severed in two. I don't understand what's going on, so they, they, they strapped me to the bed now. Because <laughs> they said, if he moves, he's, it's, it's going to be over. So they strapped me to the bed like an insane person. And, I'm, and, I'm, and they said, I said, listen, uh, I need to go to the bathroom. Here's a bedpan. You're not going anywhere. You're not doing anything. And so they, they kept me like that. And so, and so I, and, and after uh, two days later, after being strapped to the bed, the pain uh, began to subside, and the paralysis began to even more so reverse. They did more x-rays, and they said, listen, we need to do a spinal fusion. Did a spinal fusion, and here I am today. And in my military record, medical record, said the reason for the reversal of paralysis, unknown miracle. And, and the reason I share that, the reason I share that is because ever since that, that encounter with that woman and that, and that thing that God, God says, now is the time to be saved. Now. Now is the time for you to surrender. Now. See, this conference is about now. Now we need to go. I don't know what's been holding you back. I don't know what's been, you know, what's been constraining you or what's been discouraging you or what's been keeping you at bay. But God says now, now is the acceptable time. Now is faith, the substance of things hoped for. Now you have to move. Don't get stuck in what happened. You know, and they, they, so after that, all that whole thing, and they're saying, well, look, you would never jump out of planes again, which I was kind of bummed about because I, I like doing that. And, but they said, and you would never do this. You would never run. You would never do weight. Don't, don't even think about doing anything crazy because you, you are fragile now. Because this thing has happened to you, you are fragile now. And so in my mind, they understand, I'm 27 years old. I'm still in the crazy phase of my life. I don't, I, limitations is no. You tell me no, I'm going I'm to I'm try to figure out how to get past that. 
And so they let me out of the hospital. They didn't even give me a uh, rehabilitation or nothing. They let me out, and the first thing I did was went to a gym. Yes. My wife says, I'm going to report you. I'm going to report you to your company commander, you fool. I'm going to report you. I said, just let me be me. God is with me. Let me be me. And over time, over time, I began to, I began to start running again. I began to lift weights. I began to, I, you know, I said, I, I'm better. I, after, a, after six months coming out of surgery, we, we had a physical test, you know, uh, in the military. And, you know, up until that time, I was maxing all of it. I was just crazy, you know, Ranger Rick doing all the crazy stuff, right? And so they thought that I was going to, so I'm now I'm on a profile. Listen to me. A profile in the military means that you, you, cannot, you cannot perform efficiently. It means that you are not efficient to do everything that's required of you, so you now have to, you're on a profile, so there's a limitation to what you can do. I can't, it came time for that PT test, and, and they got me out there, you know, and I'm feeling good. And so uh, everyone is ready now to see, you know, well, he, he used to max everything. He won't now. I maxed that whole thing out so fast. I maxed it out so fast. My company commander, my company commander called me in the office. He says, he says Mary, uh, you, you know this doesn't mean that you would be put back on jump status. We, 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 we're watching you. I said, I don't care. I don't need to be on jump static. At that point in time, I'm like, I'm in my right mind. <laughs> I can walk. I can clothe myself. I can take, I can feed myself. You know, I can do all these things now. You know, and so they said, another thing that they said, that you would never be able to have children again because of where I broke my, in my, my spine and almost severed it. They said that all of those nerves would never, be, never come active again. My younger son was born three years after that. Now, listen, I'm telling you this. I, I'm trying to stir somebody. Somebody here today needs to know that this is your season. This is your time. Somebody needs to know that God says no more excuses now. You need, to, you need to stop the madness. Stop talking to yourself. Stop the negative self-talk. Start believing that now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Now. Now is your time. Now is your season. It's now. Are you with me now? Are you with me? I'm going I'm to I'm close with this. I was so in, in, impressed when I, re, I read about bamboo. I, 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 I like bamboo trees. I, I wanted to put some in my backyard until I read, I read up on bamboos. Because, you know, bamboo trees. Because I, I don't like to be discouraged. Anybody here like to be discouraged? No. You know, if, if, if I plant something, I want to see it grow. Amen? I want to see it grow. I mean, and I want to see it grow two days from now. <laughs> I want to see a green leaf or something. <laughs> I am not cut out to be a farmer. <laughs> I am not cut out to be a gardener. But I wanted bamboo trees because they're cool. I found this out. So a bamboo tree, you plant it in the ground. In the first four years, you don't see nothing. <laughs> Four years, you don't see nothing. Who? Uh, <laughs> you got to be a bamboo farmer to do that. So the first four years, you don't see anything, right? <laughs> this is truth. Not cool. But on the fifth year, suddenly. Suddenly. Remember that word, suddenly. The fifth year, the bamboo tree can grow 90 feet tall. Fifth year, five years. S sowing for four years. I mean, just patience, watering, hoping. Blessing, thanking, <laughs> praising, faithfulness, <laughs> consistent, commitment, giving, showing up when you don't feel like it, being here, 
singing, praising, shouting, committing, tithing, giving, all those things. And then suddenly, God says, suddenly, God says, go. Now. 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 I believe for some of us here today, that's your word. That's your word. Like Zachariah said, and don't do what he did. Zachariah said, well, how will I know? God says, because I told you. <laughs> but because you didn't believe me, you, you're not going to be able to even talk about it. He was, he was dumb. He couldn't speak. He was mute. He couldn't even say nothing. The whole while... This thing was going on. But when it was born, he had to call it what God called it. And I, I, I feel today in my spirit, man, I feel it so strongly that God is saying, are you still available? Because I'm about to put suddenly in your spirit. You need to be still available because I'm about to put suddenly in your spirit. And, and suddenly, and, he said, and so that, that is to stir you. So that you can go. Get out of comfortableness. Get out of just being churchified about things. But get into the spirit of suddenly so you can go right now. I just sense the spirit of God is moving upon people in this place, in this conference right now. He has brought you to now. Your time, your season, now. Because he has burst suddenly in your spirit. So you can just simply go. That nothing's going to stop you. you. You say, well, but I've been here so long, I've not seen the fruit that I want to see. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. He's never going to tell you the truth. I mean, they told me that you, oh, yes, yeah, you would never do this. You would never do that. And don't think about having children no more. You got two. You'd be, be happy with that. Bless God. You know, all these things. I'm like, no, man, listen, you don't understand. I am not believing and trusting in you anymore. I got your report, devil. And I don't like it. <laughs> so I'm going to believe what God says now. I'm going to trust what God says. I'm going to do what God wants me to do now. Amen. There's no limitations with God. No limitation with God. God can do anything. So this, so this morning, God is saying, I want you to embrace suddenly because I want you to do something now because it's time for you to go. It's your time. It's your season. And God says, now. Amen. Give him praise for that. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I'm going to let you go this morning. I want you to just bear with me for a moment here. We're going to begin to pray about some things.